Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and right now you're looking at my 350 gallon aquarium. You know I show you guys this tank a lot, and it's simply because I love it. Um, these fish are growing, they're looking awesome. Look at this guy right here, the Cicla Acellaris peacock bass in front. Um, starting to produce that nice gold coloration a little bit more. Today he was going back and forth all day fighting his reflection, and you know com competition is what brings the best out of these fish. So he has some nice gold colors coming in and just everybody in this tank is always on their A game. Look at them going at it. Um, everybody's looking awesome, so I'm just always ready to show you guys this aquarium. Now I know a lot of us enjoy watching monster fish because overall these fish are very amazing, but they do have monstrous requirements. So first off, being large fish, they do require large aquariums. This tank is once again 350 gallons and these fish make it look small, so you definitely need a large aquarium. On top of that, the expense and the effort that comes with that larger aquarium, you have to pay for food for these fish, pay for all the equipment, then you have to be willing to do all the maintenance in order to keep your fish healthy and happy. And I know a lot of us just may not be able to do that. Luckily for us, in this aquarium hobby, there are hundreds of different species of fish to choose from. And I know without a doubt, you can find a great alternative to the monster fish that you admire, whether it's a fish that looks similar or that behaves similar, and you can find one that is suitable for your aquarium size. Now in my original video of monster fish alternatives, I told you guys to leave me some suggestions that you might have of great replacements for some of these monster fish that we can't keep. And I must say you guys really came through. In fact, this video is 90% of suggestions that I receive in the comment section. So I highly thank you guys for that. I even learned about fish that I never knew about. Um, I found some great replacements. So yeah, big thank you to all you guys who watched this video. And I knew it from the start. We all have our own experiences. We all have our own aquariums that we learn from. And once again, big thank you because this video is directly from you guys. So just like in the first video, we're gonna go ahead and start off by taking a look at some alternatives to the piranha. So the piranha is a very famous fish. They're very awesome, but they're not the easiest fish to take care of. And that's because these fish do get pretty large. On top of that, they need to be kept in schools and also they require a lot of protein and that type of diet can be challenging when it comes to keeping a clean aquarium. So definitely not the best fish for beginners, but there are some great alternatives. So I'll start off by saying that piranha are in a group of fish known as charison, and there are many members of this group, including tetra. Tetra are very famous and there are many different types, and tetra and piranha both share that common need for schools. These are a type of fish that really need to be kept in numbers, and because of that, you can get similar behavior from tetra like you could find with piranha. For instance, that feed and frenzy that a lot of us like to see with piranha, you can find that with a lot of tetra as long as you keep them in numbers. I've seen a lot of piranha tanks, if you just keep one, you really won't get such interesting behavior. However, if you keep a larger number, then you're gonna get a crazier feeding habit. Same thing with most tetra. If you keep decent numbers, you're definitely gonna get a lot more behavior similar to piranha, that feed and frenzy type of style, um, a lot more activity. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Tetra and piranha have a similarity when it comes to behavior and the fact that they need to be kept in numbers. With that being said, you guys recommended Colombian tetra, diamond tetra, and serpe tetra as great alternatives to the piranha. Now, I've only kept serpe tetra out of the three, and they definitely do have that piranha attitude. They may not look too similar, but they do have that grouping mentality. So when you keep a large school of them, and when you put any type of fish food into the aquarium, they will go crazy. Now, these fish are not necessarily as carnivorous as piranha, so it's not recommended that you just go and toss a piece of fish flesh in there, but you go put the food that's recommended for them, blood worms, krill, flake food, and then you'll still get that same feed and frenzy behavior, and that itself is awesome to witness. Beside that, like I said, I never kept Colombian or Diamond Tetra, but just looking at them, you definitely see that piranha within them, and I know based on all my experience with Tetra, like I said, they are a grouping fish, so if you provide a decent school of them, no doubt there'll be some great alternatives to the piranha. Another great alternative to the piranha is the Congo Tetra. Now, most Tetra originate from South America, Congo tetra are one of the few tetra to originate from Africa. These are one of the few tetra also to be categorized as a predatorial tetra. In the wild, these fish hunt small insects and bug larvae. They can reach about four inches, and I believe that that bigger size help give you that piranha fill. And just like piranha, when you feed these fish, they definitely come alive. So definitely a great alternative. Now surprisingly, the fish that got the most votes for a great alternative to the piranha is the tiger barb. Now this is a little bit shocking because when you look at the two fish, they look nothing alike, 
but the comparison is really with the behavior. So if you've ever kept tiger barbs, you definitely know what I'm talking about. These fish, they need to be kept in numbers just like piranha. These fish believe strength in numbers, so the more you get, the more confident they are. But the biggest comparison is when you feed them. So when you have a group of tiger barbs, when you put food in the tank, these fish are vicious when it comes to eating. They pretty much form a bait ball around the food. If you put like a cube of blood worms, they'll form a bait ball around it. Same thing if you drop like a large pellet, they'll fall form a little circle and just go at it crazily and they're pretty much the same if not more intense when it comes to feeding than piranhas so that's definitely a great alternative if you're looking for a vicious eater now there's actually another youtube channel called the bearski method and this youtuber keeps piranha and tiger barbs in the same aquarium and I'm always amazed when I see his feeding videos because with the piranha, the tiger barbs are right in a feeding frenzy and it's definitely awesome. So I'll leave a little link in the card section above so you can check that out. But tiger barbs are definitely an option for replacing your piranha if you can't keep them. So if you have as small of a tank as 10 gallons, but I really recommend keeping like a 55 so that you could just get a lot of them. And then the more you get, like I said, the better that feeding frenzy. Next, I have some alternatives to the freshwater gar. So we all know that gar are some awesome, majestic looking fish, but a lot of times these gars get way too big for our aquariums. So a great alternative is the pink tail chalcius. Now there are actually two species, look pretty similar. Both reach about eight inches. I've kept both of them, and I love the fact that they both stay at the top of the aquarium. These fish will always stay at the top of the tank, which I love. Once again, they get about eight inches, so they'll do good in a 75 gallon aquarium. They're not too small, at the same time, not too big. Now these guys are pretty aggressive towards the same kind. When I kept two, I had to separate them because they were fighting each other. Also, one of mine was fighting my arowana, so they definitely are competitive when it comes to other fish at the top of the tank. You definitely want to keep one per aquarium, but they definitely are some cool fish. They are predatorial, so they will hunt insects and small fish that they can fit in their mouths. But overall, definitely a great alternative. And then you have wrestling half beaks. These fish can reach about four inches. They are a live bearing fish. And really not much to say. You look at this fish and you definitely see a miniature gar. And similar to that, you have the pike live bearer. Now, I actually never knew about this fish. It was a commenter who told me about this fish. So big thank you for making me aware of this species. And just like the half bait, when you look at this fish, you see nothing but a miniature gar. And that's just awesome. Now, these fish are a little bit harder to find. Um, they are live bearers, very similar to mollies. But yeah, definitely a cool fish, and if I ever get the chance, I definitely would love keeping these. After that, someone also suggested that a good replacement for the payara, also called the vampire fish, is the scissor tail rasbora. Now, that person sees the payara in this fish. I actually see this fish as a great alternative to my flag tail prochilidas. Um, and you see what I'm talking about with the flag tail, the scissor tail rasbora. Rasbora are a schooling group of fish, so you would get like a group of six of them, they would school together, and I believe that they would be great alternatives to the flagtail pochilidus. Another great alternative to the flagtail pochilidus is the flagtail porthole catfish, and the fact that they have that similar flagtail, these fish can reach about six inches, and just like with the rasbora, I would get a school of them, and they definitely would have that same effect as the flagtail. Another fish that gets too big for most of our aquariums are these larger eels, like the fire eel or the tire track eel, both of which could reach about two feet long, which is pretty much too big for our aquarium. So a great alternative would just be to get smaller eels, like a spiny eel or a peacock eel. After that, we have the lungfish. Now, I personally am not attracted to this fish, just as too weird for me. But I know a lot of you guys like the lungfish. I see a bunch of videos of these fish, but they do get really big, too big for most aquariums. So a great alternative is the dojo loach. They definitely have that same body shape. The dojo loach can reach about eight inches. And I'm not sure about the activity level of the lungfish, but I know without a doubt the dojo loach is a very active fish and um, definitely very enjoyable. Now I know that in the world of monster fish, there are a lot of catfish that a lot of us would like to keep, but just get way too big for us. So there are some great alternatives for those monster catfish. So first off, the Eclipse catfish. This catfish can reach anywhere between 10 to 18 inches. Once again, I mentioned this before, it's weird for a catfish to have such a wide size range. I guess it depends on the aquarium that they're kept in and the conditions. But we're gonna look at the larger size, 18 inches, which is too big for most of us. And a great alternative is the two-spot mustis. In the same family as the Eclipse catfish, looks very identical but this catfish only reaches three inches, and you know a lot of us are able to keep such a catfish. And then you have those catfish that get ridiculously huge, like the goonch catfish. I heard that in a wild, the goonch is able to eat children. So that's definitely a fish way too big for our aquariums. So a good alternative would be the chaka chaka catfish, also called the frog catfish. 
Now, honestly, I never even knew this fish existed. It was on my last video, one of you guys suggested this. And in appearance, it definitely looks like the gunch. I would, just by looking at it, I could tell that it's an ambush predator because it uses that camouflage, it has a big mouth. This fish reaches about eight inches, so it will do good in a 55 gallon aquarium or larger. And similar to that, you have the banjo catfish. Now, there are several different species, but the most common banjo gets about maybe five inches, which makes it suitable for a 40 gallon or larger. And the same deal, they use that camouflage to hide and also to ambush small prey. And another viewer mentioned that a good alternative to the red-tailed catfish is the Raphael catfish. So we all know that the red-tailed catch can reach about three to four feet long and they get massive. And the Raphael catfish, there's two varieties. You have the spotted Raphael, which reaches about six inches. And then you have the striped Raphael, which reaches about eight inches, both of which have a nice bulky body and they definitely could be some decent replacements in smaller aquariums. And there are quite a few catfish that don't get too massive that are ideal. And I actually made a video a little while back. So if you want more ideas of catfish for your aquarium that are not gonna bust your tank, you go ahead and check out the video that is in the card section above. After that, people told me that this next fish would be a great alternative to arowana. They also told me that this same fish would be a great alternative to the snakehead, and it is betta macrostoma, and just basically wild type betta. Now, I never kept these fish before, but just by looking at them, I definitely see the arowana within them. I also see the snakehead within them. They have that nice body pattern like a snakehead would have. And I also read that these have a drop down mouth just like the arowana, making them very similar to the arowana as well. Now I never kept them as I said before, but I also hear that the personality of these fish is just like a snakehead, very interactive. And I also read that these better have a predatorial instinct, so definitely something worth checking out. They definitely have the looks of both the arowana and the snakehead. Another monster fish that a lot of people are attracted to is the wolffish. Now the wolf fish is a predatorial fish that can reach almost two feet long. So a good alternative is the peacock gudgeon. Now there are actually several different species of gudgeon, but the peacock gudgeon is the easiest to get your hands on. And they definitely are very similar to the wolf fish. When you look at the way they swim, the wolf fish spends the majority of his time towards the lower section of the tank. Well, honestly, a wolf fish is more nocturnal. So every wolf fish that I've seen, they pretty much stay stationary until either you put food in the tank or you turn the lights out because they are mostly nocturnal. The gudgeon have the same swimming behavior where they like to stay at the bottom. They also like to perch on rocks similar to the way the wolf fish will perch, but they are more active when the lights are on, which is a good thing. Another alternative to the wolf fish is the night goby, and this fish could reach about maybe five to six inches. It has a predatorial nature just like the wolf fish, and it's more manageable. So that's definitely another option. And then you have these monstrous cichlids that get really big too big for most aquariums. I know a lot of people like the cichlids because they have a lot of personality, but there definitely are some cool smaller options. So first off, the jaguar cichlid. These fish, the males, can reach about 16 to 18 inches in captivity. In a while, they do get bigger, but in captivity, that's pretty much their mark, which is still too big for most aquarists. So a good alternative is the Cuban cichlid. You still get that similar body pattern, while the male will only reach about eight to 10 inches, which is a lot more ideal for most people. Similar to that, another alternative to the jaguar cichlid is the yellow jacket cichlid, which is actually in the same family as the jaguar. And no doubt the similarities are there and they only reach about eight to 10 inches, just like the Cuban cichlid, making them ideal for a tank as small as 75 gallons. After that, you have the Umbi cichlid. I always thought that this was a cool looking fish. Um, the males support a nice bluish body. The females have more of a yellowish body. Um, they can reach about 24 inches, which is too big for most of us. And on top of that, they are very aggressive. So you'll have a big aquarium and you'll most likely only be able to keep one fish or made a pair. So definitely a challenging fish to keep. So a good alternative would be, if you like to look at the female with that yellow body, I think that a good alternative is the Salvini cichlid. Definitely looks very similar to a female umbi. And if you more so like the color of the male with that blue speckle, the green terror is a great option for a miniature version. Okay everyone, so I wanna finish this off with one more alternative. A couple of you guys wanted to see an alternative for the peacock bass. Um, was there a smaller fish that had a similar behavior or a similar structure as far as appearance? And honestly, I couldn't find a single fish that was similar to the peacock bass. Um, I couldn't find anyone that looked like them or that behaved like them. Luckily, one of you guys came through and you suggested the three spot earth eater. Now at first when I heard earth eater, I said no way because these peacock bass, they're predators or earth eater is more of a scavenger that digs to the substrate. But I have a peacock bass upstairs, my Cicla Orinco. I wanna show you guys a picture of this fish. 
And then I will show you guys a picture of the three spot earth feeder and let me know what you guys think. Okay everyone, so those have been some alternatives to the monster fish that we see every day but we just can't get our hands on. So always, let me know what you guys think about this video. If you like what you saw today, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you want more, make sure you subscribe because look at all these tanks. Look at all these fish, the peacock bass fighting. There's a lot going on, a lot to show you guys, and you don't want to miss out. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.